Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes Reacts. I am Office Bloke Dave. And I'm Office Bloke Mike. I am Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are marketing geniuses for coming up with the Office Blokes. That's one of the best product names ever. I'd like to think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not going to say who came up with it, but... Yeah. It, it wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are the Office Blokes and we've got a Patreon page. We have indeed. Uh, go to patreon.com, uh, put in Office Blokes React. Uh, if you fancy supporting our channel, uh, like a lot of people have yes. done already, which has been absolutely fantastic, Thank by you. the way, uh, go there and check it out. Yeah, massively appreciated so indeed. far. Yeah, yeah. And there's two other channels that if you don't go and check out, who even are you? That's yeah. what I want to know. Go on my Instagram, <laughs> Office Bloke Daz. I mean, that's not the one, but you can go on the Instagram and check me out, Office Bloke Daz. And uh, we have Office Blokes Try, where we try stuff. Uh, lots of content yeah. on there. Go over there and try it. And we've got Office Blokes Podcast, where we do a podcast every Friday, 6 p.m., British Standard Time, where we talk topical content, all different things. If you want us to talk about something, just put a comment in and we'll talk about it. And we've got Office Blokes yeah. uh, Podcast again. It's a third channel mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> where me and Mike do English Premier League football every yeah. Tuesday called the Monday Morning Moan. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So there was quite a few requests for this and we didn't get around to it yet because it's 20 think, minutes. Was it Big Matt? Did Big Matt ask for it as well? I can't remember. Someone did. It was probably Con Man. Con fair. Man or Big Matt. Big One Man. Two. Uh, yeah, 20 worst product names ever. I don't know how a 20 minute... It, it seems like a, quite a long video for... I, I remember one but i could only talk about it for 10 seconds maybe i saw one the other day called the Meghan markle sausage at one of the local uh uh butchers right oh, yeah and they asked why is it called a Meghan markle sausage said it's got a bit of ginger in it <laughs> <laughs> so true, true, uh, that. true. It? yeah it's true that I mean, that's my, not my comedy that's, my initial that's true. response there is why would you put ginger in a sausage that just doesn't seem right. Why would I, you put anything? Why would you put a ginger sausage in anything? <laughs> lots, lots of people seem to like it. Um, so there was one I went on holiday um, years ago to Mallorca, and there was a chocolate milk. I've still got a photo of this at home. Chocolate milk called Batty Ram. <laughs> I'll show you the. Uh, the what's <laughs> Don't show me chocolate. <laughs> show, me, show me that. It kept flashed up. It was nine years ago. I was in Japan, and it flashed up on your memories. Yeah. And one of the shops I was outside. I'll show you later. <laughs> Can't say it on here. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, we'll get into it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Finger Marie. Finger Marie. <laughs> Works sixty percent of the time, every time. That's the next line. Wonder Boner. <laughs> <laughs> Come <laughs> this is great already. Cream ass. <laughs> you know the one that may not be in here because it's this is an American compilation. Oh yeah. Frozen meatballs. Dr. Brain's pork faggots. Oh, yeah, yeah. They still, that means meatball mm. in this country of yeah, all things. Yeah. And they still sell them in yeah. all supermarkets. Yeah, I've seen them. It still makes me chuckle every time I walk past them. Exactly yeah, the same. Yeah. I still laugh exactly every time I see the them. Yeah. An obviously bad name? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Nads. Real <laughs> girls. Is Nads a thing in America? For, oh, for that's test. what I was thinking. Yeah. Real women. Don't wax your nads. Real blokes. <laughs> blokes. Nads voted best brand in hair removal by real people. This is one of the biggest products on our list. So it would seem that unfortunate naming hasn't held it back. Created and founded in 1992 by an Australian woman whose daughter wanted to wax her arms with less pain, it's gone on to become one of the world's leading hair removal products. Real mums. <laughs> Real Aussies. However, NADS is a slang term often used for something else, popularly used in sentences such as, Oh man, that guy just got hit right in the NADS. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know the Americans said that. The success of NADS that. as a business just goes to show that a great... It's 
it was Australian the uh, the product. Yeah, no, but that was super bad. The movie, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an American movie. No, no, it wasn't. They didn't say. They didn't mention the word nads in the movie. She, she was making a reference to what it was, and using that clip as someone they're using it. It's like a visual. Getting kicked so in the nuts. They yeah. said nads. No, no, they didn't say nads on the Listen, movie. They did. They did. They did. did. Listen. Yeah. Just got hit right in the nads. The success of NADS as a Someone business right just goes to show that a great product can that. indeed overcome a questionable name. One, two, three, and rip her off. Ooh, that's amazing. <laughs> Look at that. Number 19, Look at my NADS. Trek store, <laughs> I beat blacks. It's hard to believe this name was even considered. In the 2000s, German company Trekstor came up with an idea for what to call their new MP3 player, and the outlandishly bad name they went with sounded like it was making light of prejudice and violence. Shortly after Trekstor was called out for its horrendously bad decision, the company issued an apology and promptly renamed their product. According to the company's vice president, it was named Blacks because of its, quote, elegant black piano finish. But it's still mind-boggling that they missed the obvious problem there, even if English wasn't their first language. Number 18. Reebok Incubus What do women want to wear on their feet? In the mid-90s, Reebok's marketing team answered this question with demonic spirits who take advantage of women in their sleep. In 1996, the company Is that what Incubus means? Uh, I didn't know that. No, because there's a band called Incubus, Incubus that's yeah, been around yeah, forever. Yeah. It's a demon. <laughs> Weird, never knew that. Launched athletic footwear for women called Reebok Incubus. The male counterpart of a succubus, an incubus oh. is a mythological demon said to prey on women at night while they're unconscious. Clearly, no one bothered to research what the name actually meant. At least, we hope that's the explanation. When an ABC News report broke the story, Reebok had to apologize and change the name. Number 17. Dry Sack Sherry <laughs> Dry is an interesting adjective. When you use it to describe skin, you think of unpleasant things like bitter winter months. But when you combine the word dry with wine, you think of an enjoyable adult beverage. So we can see why Williams and Humbert wanted to use it to describe its sherry. But then they added the word sack. In this product's defense, sack is actually a term that was historically used in the winemaking profession to describe certain fortified wines. But modern audiences are likely going to be too distracted by the words dry and sack together to recognize the historical meaning behind the name. Going upstairs. Because I'm going to put my nut sack on your drum set. Number 16, KUM <laughs> Hair Care. Doesn't matter if you spell it with a K or a C, it comes out sounding the same when you say it out loud. Or put it on a shampoo bottle. Is that a hair gel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. I can use no, 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 you don't have no, to. You don't, you don't. I just ran out. <laughs> the intended use of this product, coupled with its no. unfortunate name, naturally invites a whole slew of dirty jokes that are too cheap and easy to bother making. Yes, yes, yes. The product line uses kumquat extract as a key ingredient which was apparently such a distinguishing feature of this hair care line that the need to put K-U-M in the name trumped all business and marketing sense. With extract from the kumquat fruit, my hair is sexier and more vibrant than ever before. Cum hair care products really do work. You'll definitely turn heads when you have cum in your hair. Oh, the worst yeah. bit about that was the fake English accent that someone was trying to I cannot yeah. stand that. I think it was Australian, wasn't it? It wasn't English. I think that was supposed to be English. I do. There's it's a, a watched, bit of a weird accent. I half watched uh, something called Haunting a Blind Manor recently, and there's an American actress in it trying to do an English accent, and she goes from speaking the Queen's to Northern in one <laughs> sentence <laughs> and back, and it is infuriating. It's a bit like when you phone up businesses over here and they answer the phone. You know, you've got like you got like Tracy from Ben Chill and she's yeah. trying to speak like the Queen. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I wouldn't mind us redoing this whole like us doing the product name video like they've done the compilation, but saying what we really think because I think Mo Watch Mojo is quite a big channel. Mm. I think she's been very careful, the voiceover artist, about yeah. what they say. Whereas we could say exactly what we think of the product names. Yeah. So that might be a an avenue for us. I think we could Definitely. add a bit of humour to this. Yeah.
IKEA's Fartful Workbench. No one makes furniture quite like IKEA, or as much of it. The home hmm. furnishing juggernaut has risen to prominence while committing to a specific naming system. That happens to include the word fartful for a workbench. You see, IKEA mostly relies on common words from Sweden and neighboring countries to make product names. Rugs tend to be named after Scandinavian towns. Other products borrow plant and animal names. But while fartful might mean speedy to those who speak Swedish, it has a far more unsavory implication for non-Swedish-speaking shoppers. <laughs> Based on the name alone, we're keeping this workbench outside. Number 14, 666 Cold Preparation. This is just one of those strange ones. Are the manufacturers of this seemingly run-of-the-mill cold medicine intentionally invoking 666, the we'll number say. of the beast? 666, number of the devil. If so, there are multiple ways to interpret this. They could be looking to corner the goth, Satanist, or even heavy metal healthcare market. Alternatively, this could be an attempt at marketing this product as the right choice for a hellishly bad cold. God bless you! Either way, it's hard to imagine the name helped with sales, especially with more religiously conscious groups. Not on my watch! Apparently, it tasted awful, too. Number 13, <laughs> Wonder Boner. Okay, who wants to clean and debone them? I'll do it. What gives? You want to do it? Just wait till you see what I've got. <laughs> it's the Wonder Boner. Looking to put together a... And that's Stage how, wow. line. <laughs> that's how Brokeback Mountain started. <laughs> it's the uh, Wonder Boner. <laughs> that's not a chop line. Wonder Boner. <laughs> gift basket of unfortunately named products for a loved one with a penchant for puns? You've already got the pocket fisherman, so why not add a wonder boner? In all fairness, if you've ever deboned a fish, you'll know that it is no simple task, especially if you're inexperienced or don't have the right tools. The wonder boner seemingly facilitates it's removing bones better, from a fish, yeah. and based on the commercial, any immature wordplay was intentional. You just assemble the wonder boner stainless steel rods like this, you take the fish, Find the top of the spine, and you slide him through the ring on the Wonder Boner, and voila! The Wonder Boner. My wife would like that. Marketing 101 <laughs> states that you should know your target market. If the product gets the job done and your target demographic is a couple of dudes on a fishing trip, who can blame them for throwing yeah, in a cheap laugh? Yeah, good luck, Well, my Little does he know his wife's at home with the postman practicing <laughs> the Wonder Boner. He's got a massive boner. <laughs> I think the Wonder Boner's a winner. So, uh, Dave, where did you get the Wonder Boner? It's it's funny Dave. you should have. Order your Wonder Boner now. Number 12, the Fisher's Automatische Gustal Kugelfabrik Detector 3. Are you in need of the perfect tool? Also Bye. known as the gay dog. <laughs> boop, 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 boop to monitor and balance machine vibrations? No? Okay, well, this isn't exactly a must-have consumer good for the average household. However, there is a shortened version of the name that would definitely turn the heads of the masses. We agree that Fischer's Automatische Gerstahlkugelfabrik is a mouthful that warrants abbreviation, but sometimes the acronym is not the way to go. The word that results when you combine the first letters of this product name has long been on the list of offensive, pejorative words you just don't say. While the device probably works fine, we're confident the name could use an alteration or two. Number 11, Creamass. This particular brand of creatine is a bodybuilding supplement that promises to help you gain mass. Now, we're all for telling the people what they're getting. It's just good marketing practice. You know what else is good practice? Reading a product's name out loud before you plaster it all over the place. Bodybuilders will go to all sorts of extremes to reach their goals and get those gains. But with Crea Mass, well, it sounds like you're getting a lot more than you bargained for. Creamy, salty, sweet, and oaky nuttiness. <laughs> like maybe a laxative? Is that what you two get on a Friday? <laughs> Funnily enough, I've done creatine. I used to go to the gym a lot. I used to take creatine oh, did all the time. Yeah, it works. No, I was so, thinking after you've got the wonder no, not if, you've had the, <laughs> if you've had the wonder bone, you two, and then one of you get cream ass. Fuck. As well. Dreadful. If you Dreadful. notice someone using this product at the gym, maybe keep your distance when they're doing squats. What is that stink? Number 10, 
The Jew's ear juice. <laughs> mm, Something Bora would say. Who wants a long, warm draft of ear juice poured right from the source? Pop some zuck. The name of this Chinese beverage actually comes from one of its ingredients, a kind of fungus commonly called Jew's ear. In 2010, Israel's consul general in Shanghai, Jackie Aldan, praised the name, saying that it reflected the Chinese perception of Jews as hardworking and successful. But according <laughs> yeah. to a company spokesperson, it really was just all about the fungus. After the confusion, they decided to change the name to Black Fungus Juice. Now, <laughs> into the dish. To be honest, it doesn't actually sound that much more appealing. Number nine, whack off. Nice. <laughs> this heavy duty insect repellent makes a number of big claims. It promises tropical strength protection and is used by the armed forces. It also advertises itself as being maxi strength DEET, which wilderness enthusiasts can clarify is not a real measurement of diethyl toluamide, but more akin to saying a lot. But with a real concentration of 346 grams per kilogram of DEET, this is honestly some seriously potent insect repellent. You think the EPA would ever allow that much DEET? <laughs> the only issue? The fact that Whack Off is written three times bigger than anything else on this tube full of gel. Honey, if I'm gonna get whacked off, I at least deserve to understand why it's happening. What are you smiling about? No, you're very sweet. We're not going, hun, we're not going to get whacked off. I think we are. We shudder to think of the poor soul who read that label too quickly late one night. Number eight, Mother Fuker's Salted Peanuts. <laughs> Fuker. Yes. Isn't he an H in whack, by the way? I, that's what I was going to say. I thought, <coughs> whack. Whack. Yeah, it should be. There is, yeah. Yeah. Don't know anything about Mother Fuker. Whacking off. Uh, yeah, motherfuckers salted nuts. Not Mother Fuker. Motherfucker. They should sell them over here because they would sell well in the pubs, wouldn't they? <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Give me some fucking motherfucking Mother salt. Nuts. <laughs> nice. Are we seriously Kansas? doubt that the people behind this salty snack were completely unaware of how people would read this product name. Nuts! Hot salty nuts! Who wants them? But in their defense, the questionable word is pronounced fukers. There's not a ton of information available about these peanuts, but every now and then they'll pop up on eBay or an online vintage marketplace. What we do know is that the name was apparently problematic enough that the Norwich Packing Company felt the need to include the pronunciation in their trademark. In legal paperwork, the company emphasizes that it's pronounced Fukers. F-O-C-K-E-R. Fucker. Hmm. Fucker. But despite the company's tremendous efforts around its product's name, we probably won't be bringing these home for mom. Number seven, Nintendo DS <laughs> Touch Kick. <laughs> Many of the poorly named products. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> de, de, de. <sighs> How does this even happen? Like, I get, you know, you're releasing some salted nuts, so you're going to, like, tongue in cheek. Same with the, uh, what was it, the Wonder Boner. I get it. I get it, but Nintendo. You, you get Wonder Boner? <laughs> All the time, yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a curse. But yeah, I get it, because it's marketing. I think that's yeah, funny, yeah. you know, and it, I'd have never heard of the Wonder Boner if it wasn't for its name. <laughs> Nintendo, you think a massive company like that, somebody must have been there, thought, it's not a good idea. Yeah, I, think any, I always think that anything that's got the word touch in it has to be very careful. I'm not a marketing yeah. guru, but I'm thinking touch doesn't always sound the best no. word to use. no. Well, there's a, there's a local bomb toucher around here on the canal at the moment, isn't there? That's made local news. Oh, I saw news. that yesterday, yeah. I read about that last night. <laughs> yeah. The cyclist, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I read about it last night. <laughs> so you're right about being careful. Yeah. <laughs> at least he's not playing the uh, Nintendo Touch dick. Just touching arse. <laughs> it's on our list today come from small to mid-sized companies. So we are honestly shocked to see a mistake this uncomfortable from Nintendo. That's truly shocking. Honestly, even researching this product was challenging. Those are not two words that you want to be Googling on your work computer. Surprisingly, Nintendo DS Touch Dick is not, in fact, an adult game or even a dating sim. It's actually just about the tamest thing the company has ever put out, because it's a dictionary. The game came out exclusively in South Korea, but pressure and probably a few laughs from Western audiences ensured that the title was changed to the completely safe Touch Dictionary. Crisis averted. Number six, Golden Circle SARS. In the medical world, SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. However, 
It's also the name of a beverage manufactured by the Golden Circle Company. I'm alright. I know right that the that kids one. love a cool yeah. abbreviation, but in this case, more is more. Label a can as sarsaparilla, and consumers will think you're old fashioned. Ah, can't get a good sarsaparilla like this back in Springfield. Stamp the letters SARS across it, in all caps, and they'll seriously second guess your ingredients. Oddly enough, there were some claims that Golden Circle's poorly named beverage experienced increased sales during the SARS coronavirus outbreak in 2003. A similar sales spike in Corona was reported shortly after COVID-19, another coronavirus, was declared a pandemic in early 2020. Number 5. Finger Marie I thought the Corona one, I thought they dipped in sales. I thought, that's what I thought as well. I'm sure I heard that at first, that people weren't buying it because of it. I but, only ever drink Corona if I'm out and about in a bar sometimes or in the sunshine, sat in a beer garden, yeah. maybe. So sales might go down because it's not something you drink at home, Corona, is it? I've got, I don't think I've so, got no. it on draft at home. Have you? Okay. Mm. Oh, there you go. I've yeah. never had Corona on draft. No, it's, it's a new thing, I think. Wow. But it's uh, I've got two pumps at home. Yeah. One's got Stella and one's got Corona. Is it? Oh, God. Very nice. Mm. Fancy a beer. It's a nice though. drop of beer as well. And when, you, when, you, buy the, when you buy the, they're only small kegs like this mm. from um, um, Kegs Arles. No, I can't recall now where I buy them from. Uh, but they, they send you the glasses as well with them. Nice. So you get Corona glasses and Stella glasses and all that yeah. when, you buy, oh, when you buy the kegs. Nice. We need yeah. to put a pump in. Also, <laughs> also a good product name. <laughs> pump in. Pump in. <laughs> Known as McVitie's Cookies. First of all, we don't take too kindly to foods that tell us what to do. Second, when did cookies get so bossy? While McVitie's is a British snack food company, this particular Thank name you, comes from the name of one of their products in Sweden. While Marie is the name for a type of biscuit, it's probably not the first thought people have in mind when they see this product's packaging. Finger. I know someone who's going to be sponsored by Matvitsi soon. Really? Watch this space, I'll show you. Mm. Oh. Isn't that, uh, what's his name? He's like a reality TV star, isn't he? He's, he's, he's the heir yeah, to, uh, to the uh, McVitie's. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. Can't won't be, won't be him. But there'll be a sponsorship going out soon. Nice. Mark my nice. words. Cookies are great in all shapes, sizes, and flavors. But when you're naming them, keep first names out of it. Marie, you want to go home? Number four, alien versus predator, child predator. <laughs> <laughs> wow, where do we even what? start with this one? Considering it's merchandising for an established film franchise that takes itself seriously, we're pretty sure the name wasn't meant as a joke. It's just a really bad sequence of words Curb that should never pickle. have been brought together, <laughs> let alone slapped on a product intended Ice cream for children. Van if you rush this, people will get hurt. Maybe die. I don't understand your objection. On second thought, though, who is the intended demographic here? We're pretty sure there has yet to be a film in the Predator franchise that would rightly qualify as child-friendly. This product raises many questions, but there is one thing we're absolutely certain about. Its name should have never gotten the green light. Most listings have, unsurprisingly, since been updated. Number three. Nope. You know what? I'm not going to say that. There are a number of unique bathing options out there. You can take a dip in hot springs, mud baths, and even beer. It's a bit salty though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just think of it as a very salty hummus. <laughs> baths. The latter actually has a long history in Eastern Europe and has some health benefits. However, this kind of dip sounds uh, altogether dubious. We need oh, to get that wait, for the Tri Channel. This spicy is a dip hot in spread. The sense? Wow, that's actually worse. Spelled with a C, Semen, pronounced chemen, is in reality a popular type of dip or spread that hails from Turkey. It can be made from tomato paste, garlic, and walnuts. Nope, Looks we right. are not Gotta going get some of that. Yeah. Honestly, reading nice. the ingredients, it actually sounds pretty good. But it would certainly benefit from a rebrand in English markets. No. Number two, AIDS. Uh. <laughs> this appetite suppressant wasn't just a real product. It was a hit. If you look as broad as this, and you'd rather look as slim as this, try the AIDS-reducing plan. <laughs> Originally produced by the Carlay Company, oh, wow. its roots date all the way back to the Let's 1930s. Lose weight. It wasn't until the 1970s and early 80s, however, that it really hit its stride and became an industry leader. Why not try AIDS? But that all... To be fair, AIDS wasn't really a thing, was it, up until the 70s? And as AIDS in, like, is yeah, widely yeah, spread. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah, it was definitely an unfortunate one for the uh, people 
making then anyway. Because, yeah. you know, it was, if the product it is, was a legitimate product name, wasn't it? At yeah, the if time. it was around so, for ages before then, that's not an unfortunate name. They can't help that, can they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Changed when awareness about acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS, increased drastically in the 80s. It also didn't help that the primary function of the product, losing weight, was also one of the symptoms of the condition. The company tried to pivot by rebranding its product as AIDS Slim and Diet AIDS, but in the early Definitely 90s, hell. the company gave up and ceased production. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable Love mentions. Sack. <laughs> Love Sack. They sell clean Love furniture, sack. but the name sounds dirty. <laughs> P-Touch. Did anyone think this one through? I'm not sure about that. Mm. Told you anything with the word touch in it. It doesn't yeah, sound yeah. good. true. What P-Touch? D-Bag. You had 25 <laughs> other letters you could have chosen. <laughs> Oh, the bag. It's the bag. <laughs> the bag. Want more mojo? Context TV produces original, high quality videos on business, entrepreneurship, and politics, but from a different point of view. The battle is being. Number one Rexona Girl 24 hour intensive Pussy Wind Hello Kitty <laughs> Anti Perspirant. <laughs> Where to begin yes. with this product? Probably with general advice to all aspiring product marketers out there that while the acronym for that is Queef. I didn't say it. Is it go back? No, I lied. <laughs> I tried to say <laughs> Queef. <laughs> Probably with general advice to all aspiring product marketers out there that while pussy cat is a cute way to refer to a feline, you can't take the word cat away and expect people to still understand. can chalk up this lengthy name to a series of bad translations that serendipitously came together in one truly awful name. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. 24 hour intensive wouldn't be so bad if it weren't followed by those next two words. <laughs> we can only assume that wind was supposed to mean that it's an aerosol spray, but by the time you read Hello Kitty and understand that that's the feline they're referring to, it is much too late. Rexona, it won't let you down. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check wow. out this other recent clip. Yeah, it was, it was good. Definite funny ones on there. I'd like it if they leaned into it and the narrator actually said what the things are called, though. <laughs> yeah. Just being yeah. very careful, like trying to be PC. I think we have to get some semen dip. Without, <laughs> yeah. To be fair, <laughs> it looks nice. Mm. Looks all right. I like actually. dips yeah, like that. Yeah. Mm. It's definitely lost in translation a few of those, weren't they? I think, you know, yeah, I haven't got the uh, people in to check them out before they've uh, made the decision to go with the names. But, the amount of times you see yeah. them on foreign, um, in foreign countries where they put names on boards, on shop windows or whatever yeah. it is, they spelling mistakes or mm -hmm. small little things. Just get them pro you know, proofread first. But yeah. some of the translations, when they put them up, it's... Loads of stuff. Get someone to look at it. Yeah. I mean, come on. Loads of stuff you order from, uh, from Amazon. You know, the Chinese instructions mm. that come yeah. with it that have been translated exactly into English to just make no sense, no sense. whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I don't think people are that concerned about it, to be fair. No, probably not. But I'm talking about if you've got a shop. So what would you rather try, though? Semen dip or pussy wind? Depends who it, depends who it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you tried one, you'd probably get the other. <laughs> you could do two, two in one go. <laughs> try channel. It can smell like pussy wind while we're eating semen dip. I'm into that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Depends, uh, who, depends who's depositing and, uh, <laughs> and expend, expending. expending. I, I think the next thing we branch out into once the podcast gets bigger and every, you know, when we need another target to hit oh, yeah. I think we start doing compilations like that but I think we say what we think of it and we can lean into it and we can joke about it being called Pussy Wind and Semen Dip and stuff because yeah. for me that was very it was a great compilation but it was very tame it was very like what too much was saying, I think, wasn't she? Yeah. She, very, uh, yeah, yeah. Whereas if we said what we really thought about things like that, I think it'd, <laughs> it'd be, be a it. lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. In a bad day. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's the end game when yeah. it's all going wrong yeah. for us and the scandals come out and stuff. Then <laughs> we'll just, we'll just fully, <laughs> fully lean into it on the dark web. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys well, like that too. Don't forget like and subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, cheers. guys. Cheers.